Hey guys, what's up? It's Jesse here from Canadian DIY and today we're going to build that end table. It's going to be part of a three part series. We're going to be building an end table, a bookcase and a TV stand. All of them are going to have the exact same color and design theme, same details and they're all going to match obviously. Um, we've got a chamfered hardwood top on this, chamfers on the legs, pull out drawer for extra storage. It's a really usable little piece. It's gorgeous. If you guys like this video, like, comment, subscribe, everything like that. I'm going to show you how I did this one right now. So for this end table, we're going to be doing a faux frame and panel finish or kind of like a shaker style. Now I'm just cutting down some two by twos to length here for my legs. This table is going to be 18 inches tall. I'm using a three quarter inch top. So I'm just cutting my legs to 17 and a quarter inches, cutting my side wood, side plywood panels down to 14 inches and then some one by twos down to 14 inches as well. And I'm cutting the back plywood panel down to 15 inches the same with my rear one by two uh, panels as well. And the only reason I said that I'm doing this is because I just didn't want something to be so slab sided. You can get some really good custom looks to it with actually the simplest of techniques. Now just from there, go ahead and drill some pocket holes into the plywood panels to attach them to the legs. You can use whatever joinery method you want here, but pocket holes are the quickest and the easiest. And a lot of people kind of have access to it. I'm just using my Craig jig right here. If you have a big one, a small one, doesn't matter. You get the same result. And you should be left with all the wood for your frame. I'm just giving everything a quick preliminary sanding here. I'm just sanding up to 220 grit. Make sure you don't go through the thin veneer on the plywood. Just buzz over it real fast. On the legs and the 1x2s, I'm starting off at 80 grit and I'm working my way up to 220. From there, what we're going to do is take some 3 quarter inch spacers and place them underneath of our plywood panel. Run a bead of glue on each side of the plywood. And then I'm going to clamp everything in place. Make sure it's all secure and it doesn't move. Make sure that your plywood is flush with the two by twos or one by two, sorry, on top. After that, just take at your pocket hole screws and then you'll have one side and two legs done in an instant. From there, we're going to take both of our side panels now and we're going to add some glue to our rear panel, put it in between both of the side pieces and between your two by twos, using the same three quarter inch strips, we're going to brace it up, clamp everything into place, add your pocket hole screws, and you've got three sides of your frame already finished. All right, here's where the piece really starts to get some design going on. Now this is where we're going to make the look of our raised panels. So I'm just taking my one by twos that I cut earlier and I'm just running a bead of glue onto them and I'm just clamping them in place. If you don't have clamps or not enough clamps anyway, you can go ahead and use brad nails or whatever you've got at your disposal. I'm going to be staining this piece, so I just don't want to have to go back and fill a whole bunch of nail holes afterwards. But that's three panels done. From here, we're just going to go on and I'm cutting some one by two again. Now, I'm using poplar here, but you can go ahead and use pine as well if you want to. This is going to be the face frame for the fourth side. So this is going to be the front side as well. And we're going to have our drawer opening inside of here. From there, I'm just drilling some pocket holes for, to attach my face frame in my vertical styles. Then in my horizontal rails, I'm just going to go ahead and add one pocket hole to each side to attach the face frame to the body of the coffee table. Go ahead and add a little bit of glue. I'm clamping these down to the table to ensure that they don't move around and just screw them together with some inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. And once you've finished working your way around the frame of screwing, gluing, drilling, screwing, screwing, gluing, drilling, you'll have the face frame all complete.
and then same as before just a quick pre-sanding of 220 grit just to make sure it's nice and smooth and all the edges are flush with each other after that we'll move back to the frame remove all of our clamps and then we'll move on to attaching our face frame this is the exact same way we did before run a bead of glue around there space it up three quarters of an inch clamp it in place make sure it doesn't move and just add your pocket holes making sure it's flush on top from there we're going to go ahead and move on to drawer assembly now i'm using the two side panels that i have from my drawer taking a total measurement of the remaining that i've got opening subtracting half an inch from my drawer slide on each side so one inch in total go ahead and cut your front and back pieces for your drawer i'm using 3 8 inch birch plywood that i've got ripped down to three inches for me i'm using a corner clamp here a little bit of glue and a few brad nails to put it together this is going to be a fairly light duty drawer obviously so it doesn't need to be crazy strong with screws and all that kind of stuff so just a couple of uh, short inch and a quarter brads and some glue be more than enough to hold this in place then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to take a quarter inch plywood bottom as well run a bead of glue all the way around that and then we're going to attach that to the bottom same thing just using some 5 8 inch brad nails underneath make sure the drawer is square to your plywood piece before you put it in i just like to put a tack into each corner pulling the drawer into square and while we're waiting for the drawer to dry i'm going to go ahead and take a one by three and i'm going to drill a couple of pocket holes in each end and this is going to be the rails that go inside of the frame for our drawer slides to mount to you'll notice on the one side I'm only drilling one pocket hole and that's so that way my drawer slide will actually cover that pocket hole so if the drawer comes out you won't actually see the pocket hole in that piece it'll be covered up by the drawer slide I cut myself a spacer to fit onto the one side just clamp it that way you know everything is nice and square and then just use your pocket holes and screw it into place from there we're going to attach the drawer slide itself to our drawer I'm pre-drilling because I'm using very thin plywood and I don't want my screw to blow the plywood to pieces. So I'm just uh, pre-drilling real quick, running in my screws. I'm also mounting mine from underneath because I'm using very thin plywood. From here, I'm using a quarter inch spacer to build up my drawer base because I want to have a quarter inch between the drawer bottom and my frame itself. Mark a line. These drawer slides, you need to be half an inch above where your drawer is actually going to be. So from there, I took my combination square, marked a straight line, clamped my drawer slide in place, making sure it's nice and level, pre-drill my holes, then go ahead and add the screws for the drawer slide itself. And then from there, it's a simple process of rinse and repeat for the other side. Once you've got that, go ahead and just do a quick test fit. Fits like a glove. From there, we're going to move on to making the false front for the drawer. So I'm taking some 1x3s that I've had ripped down to 2 inches. So I've got basically a true 2 inch board by 3 quarters of an inch. Cut it down to length and then drill some pocket holes in it again just for quick face frame assembly. Now I'm making sure that I have a half inch reveal all the way around my drawer. So just take a total measurement of the front of your drawer, which in my case is 15 inches, and I'm making the whole drawer 14 inches in total. Give everything a quick preliminary sand again, just like before. Go ahead, clamp everything down to the table, making sure everything is nice and flush top and bottom. Add your glue, add your inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. And then from there, because you can pull the drawer out and you will be able to see part of the backside, I am taking and running a bead of glue inside of my pocket holes and I'm adding some pocket hole plug fillers just to cover them up and make them look a nice bit cleaner. You can go ahead and cut those plugs down, plane them down, sand them down, whatever you've got available for you. And then while that is sitting there drying, I'm going to take a three quarter inch plywood panel and I'm taking it for the bottom shelf. Cut it down to size, cut out the notches for all of your legs. And then you can go ahead and again, attach this however you want. I'm just drilling pocket holes into each one of the corners. It's going to be on the bottom side anyway. Nobody's going to see it. I'm edge banding my shelf. You can go ahead and add trim to it, whatever you want. 
from my shelf I'm having a quarter inch reveal on the front and the back and the sides so I just took a total measurement of my shelf or my frame subtracted half of an inch and that was the total size for the edge banding just go ahead run a knife or a razor blade or a chisel whatever you've got cut off the excess and then in order to get the edges off I just like to put pressure on it and just snap it with my thumb from there I'm just taking putting it inside of the frame adding some clamps just to kind of hold it in place top and bottom and then I'm tightening it down with my band clamp just to pull all the legs together and then running some pocket hole screws into it I'll set the frame aside move back to the false front for the drawer now that it's dry I'm just using a rabbiting bit to route out a quarter inch plywood backer panel mark the lines for that cut it down to size in the table saw take it back to the false front now we have square corners but because of our rabbiting bit we've got round edges so then from there I'm just going to take and I've marked off all the corners that I need to cut go back to the table saw just notch those off at a 45 run a bead of glue put it inside of the false front I just put some weights on it again you can use short little brad nail staples whatever you want but I'm just using the weights for to hold the glue down now we're going to move on to building the top I've got a 1 by 8 here of poplar and I had a really really nice beautiful uh, grain pattern going through the center of the board and I wanted to preserve that so I took measurements from each side making sure that I could cut that out of the middle again go ahead and drill some pocket holes in the back side of it you can use biscuit joiner whatever you want here for alignment I'm just using pocket holes run a bead of glue clamp your boards down make sure they're level and flush again use your pocket holes screw the whole thing together you'll notice that my boards aren't exactly even and that's fine I cut mine a little bit long on each side that way I can cut it down to final length making sure that all the edges are flush after the fact same thing as before pre sanding everything I'm sanding this one all the way up to 220 grit make it really really nice and smooth spend your time here because this is what people are going to touch from there I'm adding a 45 degree chamfer bit on the bottom of this table you can use a router to do this a table saw whatever you've got at your disposal go ahead and do that it's a really really nice touch it's one of those things that people will notice and they'll just like oh that's pretty nice <laughs> and then I'm doing the exact same thing on the legs as well just to add again a little bit of touch of detail stuff like that it doesn't have to be boring from there stain I'm using a Verithane Ultimate Espresso Stain and I'm leaving it on for actually quite a while. It's almost dry by the time I wipe it off. I wanted this thing to be good and dark. Go ahead and just wipe this off. Try not to make swirls with the stain because you will actually end up marring the finish. It will dry like that and you'll never get it off. You have to sand the whole finish back off. From there I put on three coats of a water-based clear coat. I didn't want it to warm it up so I didn't want to use an oil based clear once you've got your coats on there go ahead and pull nice long straight lines like this that'll help even out any brush strokes in your clear coat that way you don't have funny looking clear or anything like that and I did sand with 400 grit sandpaper in between my last coat from there now that the clear coats all dry I'm just gonna go ahead and measure find the center of my drawer front left and right and top and bottom put some masking tape down that way you don't hurt anything find the center of your cabinet hardware handles and then measure out from there after that I'm just gonna take drill my holes clamp it onto my frame use my combination square again make sure everything's good and flush and go ahead and attach it now back upstairs I'm putting the top on that way I could flip the table over on the soft carpet as opposed to my table once you've got the top centered where you want it clamp it down and then use some brackets and some screws to attach the top I put a false bottom into my cabinet as well you don't have to do this I'm just covering everything up and there it is it's not the hardest thing in the world to build but it has some really nice touches I hope you guys like this one see you in the next one